Can you guys hear me? Hello? Hello? Good. Thanks, Alice. Let me share my screen. Um, so today's notebook is, um, yes, question. So this is today's notebook and, uh, um, if you want to, uh, code with me, um, you can download the notebook or just open it up in collab, uh, or we can just, you know, watch the presentation and uh, see what happens. So, all right. Um, so today we'll formally, um, yeah, well, I'm hearing some buzzing sound from my mic. Um, okay. Um, so t this is what we're going to do today. Um, what we're going to do today is, so first, this is a recap of uh, what we have done. Um, essentially, we've learned many components. However, um, we haven't, you know, really uh, talk about uh, like how, how do we integrate it, uh, integrate all of them to build what is called a pipeline. So uh, today we'll learn a full pipeline and we'll learn something new. Uh, we'll learn how do we write a uh, optimizer using class. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll learn more about uh, classes. Um, so, and then uh, we'll learn a new data type, which is called dictionary. Um, I mean, if we're using PyTorch extensively uh, or we code our own model for our research uh, dictionary, this uh, type will be uh, used extensively. Um, so, which is uh, right here, it's called a dict. Um, all right, so let's uh, first look at what is a pipeline. Um, First, we prepare our data. For example, MNIST, uh, we come up with um, the data. For example, um, we have 70,000 um, grayscale images, black and white. Um, and uh, basically we wanna build a model that be able to tell, okay, so the handwritten digit, give me an image and uh, I'll tell you a digit. And then next is uh, normally we have to do this uh, split. So sometimes it's also called train test split. Okay. Um, and we'll learn, we'll learn this uh, later of why this is necessary for uh, machine learning because statistically speaking, um, it's perfectly possible for a model performs very well it's perfectly possible that a model performs like a hundred percent well in the data set, but in a similar data set that, that's, that add, just add white noise, a little bit of a white noise, then the neural network fails miserably. And uh, this was like maybe 10 years ago. And that's why people come up with, you know, take a step back and use a statistical, this uh, uh, validation method. So we'll, we'll learn this systematically in the later lecture, which will cover um, like a, what is overfit, what is underfit of a model. So next is then we choose a model. Um, so for example, here we choose neural network. And next is uh, uh, we choose an optimizer. So 
actually, Torch has lots of built-in optimizer. But uh, in this class, we'll learn how do we write our own. Um, even though it, it's, it sounds quite difficult at the first place, but uh, uh, if, if we treat writing code and learn how to write code as reading a manual, think about this. So we just bought a new GoPro, let's say. And, uh, and we want to know how do we use this GoPro? For example, we go hiking, you know, we go mountain biking, and we want to use this GoPro to, for example, to shoot stabilize the video. And uh, how, how could we do that? We're, we're reading the manual, right? So we either watch YouTube, so that's a shortcut. For example, it's the same thing for coding. We can Google on YouTube, hey, how to, re how to write PyTorch code? And YouTube perhaps will return a thousand video to us to watch, you know. And, but a more direct way is reading manual. It's like reading PyTorch's official documentation. For example, we're reading GoPro's manual of how to do this, how to do that. And for machine learning, many of the time, we're doing the same thing. And if we read the manual, we'll find there is something called template. So by template, I mean, so many of the code are structured similarly. And what we want to learn is how do we modify based off on this template? And uh, to, for example, to, to help us to do our research or, you know, something like that. And here then um, we'll do, we'll, we'll choose a scheduler. A scheduler is basically adaptive learning rate. So uh, we learned in class, but we haven't really talked about it, how to implement it like uh, in an efficient way or say uh, in PyTorch. And we'll, we'll talk about this later because the learning rate change can be you know, tweaked in many way. And we'll, we'll talk about this later. And the next is we choose proper loss function. Next step is train. And for our final project, okay, so there is one, more step. Maybe I'll do. I'll add it here and validate at the same time. Okay. So, and if certain validation criteria are met, for example, if our model does not improve its generalizability anymore after, for example, 50 epochs, we stop our training and we do inference. For example, for our final project, we have uh, 30, I'm sorry, uh, I think 30,000? 30, 30,000 unknown target for us to predict. And then we do this inference and we submit our final solution to Kaggle. So this is, a, this is a full pipeline. And today we'll learn this full pipeline, except some of the later material, uh, we'll learn how to code. For example, especially this validation part, which is essential to, uh, to beat the baseline in our uh, final project, like a leaderboard. Okay. So first is of course we import um, everything that's needed. Um, I think the MNIST problem is still not fixed. Um, I tried today, and uh, so we have to run this code. Um, and then we, uh, so here is the train set. Um, so this is our data, and we prepare our data. And like I said many times, these are just, you know, template, and we can copy paste it from our existing library. So for example, it's very handy to keep uh, some common code at hand. So when we need to build a new model, we can just copy and paste. And then we, we load the train to be uh, uh, to, into this train loader. The train loader essentially is we, uh, we change this into a serial object, which means is we change it to an iterator. So for example, we can uh, pull up a sample so we do next eta uh, train loader. And we check the sample. So I think the sample is, uh, is a tuple, I forgot. Okay, it's a list. So now let's print sample zero size, whoops, my bad. Uh-huh. 
So for example, this is our sample. Uh, why we have an extra one here? It's uh, because PyTorch dataset is written uh, for color images. So this one represents the color channel we have. So let me add a, a uh, so for example, this is uh, the first dimension is number of batches. So it's a batch size option here. Uh, for example, this means in our stochastic gradient descent, we let, so we compute the gradient using 64 samples. Okay, so that's, uh, um, so that, I mean, so that, that's a meaning of uh, this 64. The second one is number of channel. So by number of channel is, uh, is so we'll see this a lot. So this normally is uh, NC in PyTorch official document. Uh, we, we, we saw lots of NC in PyTorch's official document, but without knowing what it is, so docs. So it means uh, it me means how many uh, color channels we have. For example, three means RGB, okay, and four means C uh, CYMK or CMYK, but basically it means um, so color channel. So if we have a grayscale, it's just one here, and then this is width and height, height and width, okay. So high with, okay. And then uh, if we print sample um, one size. So we'll get 64. Uh, these are just, uh, you know, like uh, if we print, for example, if we print uh, the first, let's say uh, the first 10 samples, whoops, invalid syntax. So we'll basically, we'll get the labels of uh, the first 10 um, samples. For example, the uh, first sample is of class five, which means uh, it represents the digit five, all right? Next is our model. This was our model. Uh, this was a model we, we learned the last time. So the class is, uh, is MLP, so multi-layer perceptron neural network. So NM module is our template, okay? So NM module is our like main class. And right now we are writing an object, a class that inherits everything from NM module, okay? So um, I shouldn't say host and, I shouldn't say host and slave. I don't think it's used anymore, but uh, uh, let's just say this is a subclass of NM module, okay? And it inherit everything from like a NM module. And this init is called, so, so init is initialization, okay? We initialize this model. And then after initialize, and this self means we have to initialize this object itself. It's more like, uh, I'm sure, like a tradition. So, um, so everything is referring to itself. And then after, after, uh, afterward, so what's right here, the following lines are called constructors, okay? So for example, if we do self dot something, it's like adding new things to this class. And that's why it's called a constructor. And this is super, super is a special constructor. It just means uh, uh, we initialize. So uh, using this NM module, okay. So this super just uh, let MLP class inherit everything from NM module, okay. And so far it's all template. For example, this is a template and this is a template. And right now this, we can modify it. So for example, um, our model has the linear layer, okay. So for example, this is input size we specify and we have an activation and we have uh, 
um, and we have uh, um, another linear layer. Um, for example, this uh, 256 is our hidden layer size. And then we define the forward. So the forward is a fixed method. Okay. It's not fixed, but uh, I mean, it's not technically fixed, but it's a fixed method from and then module. So if we define forward, what it means is the behavior. So this forward is the behavior of, so we call our model of an input. Okay. So what is the behavior if we feed an input to the model? So for example, if we initialize this model and what will happen if we feed for example, if we feed a sample uh, zero to the model, what, what is the behavior? Okay. So for example, let me just do this. Okay. Let me do y equal that and print y size. So for example, um, the code right there, the code right here, this forward, and we, sh we should not change this forward name because uh, it's a method from an NM module that in we inherited from an NM module that we define forward in this way. If we change this to backward, uh, for example, let's try to do that. So if we change this to forward one, okay, and we run this cell again, uh, unexpected in the, my bad. Okay. We run this again. Okay. And we run this again. And our, so then our model will have trouble. So not implemented error. You see uh, which one? Okay. So not implemented error. Actually, it's because forward is not implemented. Okay. But uh, here apparently uh, the PyTorch does not tell us what is not implemented, but actually it's uh, it's this forward is not implemented. So for every model, we need initialization and a forward. And this method, like I said here, uh, it's a fixed method from N -N module. So the fix by the fix, it's uh, notice this is different. So if we learn enough programming, this this is different from a static method. Okay, so uh, so we'll we'll cover this in the later lecture, but. Uh, Right now, let's just say a fixed method is not a static method. So a fixed method means whenever we implement this class, we have to add this function in our class, all right? So how do we, why do we do this is how, and uh, why do we do this is this is getting rid of uh, color channel. And how to visualize what happens in the forward or say the forward pass, okay, is we copy all these lines. So we copy these line and we paste this somewhere else and we explicitly run every iteration. Okay, so for example, this is explicit. If we wanna do research in machine learning this is a necessary debugging skill. So uh, we don't debug using class because class is somehow uh, it's encapsulated. What we wanna do is we debug using uh, an explicit routine. So we can do this in a separate notebook or separate script, but we have to do this explicitly. Okay, so explicitly forward. First, we let our X to be sample zero, so this Basically, is our x okay? So, data fed into the model, and we'll we'll see what happens here. So, if we want to track everything, we print the size of it every iteration, okay? So, for example, let's do. Um, so, this is our uh, uh, input data, okay? So after the view is um, 
reshape, okay, uh, to remove color channel to to remove channels. Let's just say channel. Chan channels just mean color channel. And let's print uh, x size again, and then uh, x one is we print uh, after layer one. Okay, so actually after uh, layer one, we uh, it's after hidden layer one, but uh, you guys know. So for example, we print the size, but the trouble is the self. Okay, so the self cannot be used outside of a class. So instead we get rid of this self and we define linear zero elsewhere. So that, that's the trick. So for example, we let, we let linear zero, we just copy this code right here. So instead of the self, we just let linear zero equal this, okay? And the input size, of course, is not defined. So here, we can define our input size. So for example, the input size should be, uh, should be the, the last size of, uh, I mean, the last dimension size of X. So for example, we can print this. So print, so X's last dim's size is our input size. And this is our uh, first layer, all right? And then we have an activation. So we remove this self and we copy down the code of activation. Uh, we just copy this. So right here. So activation does not change. Keep this in mind. So activation, so activation does not change the shape. So all activation, um, are shape like preserving activation, even for softmax. Softmax does not change the shape of a tensor that go through it. And lastly, we have another linear layer. We remove this self and uh, uh, we copy this linear layer. So for example, so this is our linear one. And then we print uh, the size of output, output size. So output size. All right. So now let's try this code. This is explicit forward pass using torches, you know, without the torches interface. And, uh, uh, and this is a typical way of debugging a model. For example, sometimes we, like I said, it's very hard to debug a class, but instead this is, uh, this we can track the problem. For example, where it's wrong, that's wrong. Hopefully it goes through. Invalid syntax, of course. So for example, I forgot to do comma. Okay, so for example here, let's, now we can check everything. For example, input data, uh, we've already seen this. So it's 64, it's batch size, it's color channel, 24 by 24, uh, I'm sorry, 28 by 28 is uh, width, and sorry, height, height and width. I think I, 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 I write it wrong. Oh, yes, good. So it's height and width, that's right. Okay, and this is uh, uh, the batch size. And uh, uh, this is uh, 784 is we reshape every image to a 784 um, dimension. And our then our input model's dimension is 784. So after layer one, um, as we can see, the batch size never changes. So tracking the batch size is also very important because the batch size should not change. Uh, let me add one more here. So batch size, which the first dimension, so the dimension zero should not change in forward pass, okay. So the batch size should be kept a constant. For example, if we have 64 images going into the first layer 
And when these 64 images going into the first layer, 64 images must going out from the first layer. Okay, so otherwise then everything will be messed up. Uh, we don't wanna mess with uh, sample with sample. So uh, the thin zero should be kept a constant in the forward pass. Okay. So there are some exceptions because uh, the torch is, uh, is being implemented over a decade. And uh, uh, if you are interested, I can, I can show you some of uh, the trick we need to track the dimension. And then the activation does not change, so we don't have to put, uh, care about it. And then lastly is, as we can see here, the, another linear layer we do here, uh, we get the output. So the best size is still here, 64, and now it becomes 10. So the output is 10 and uh, um, it's essentially uh, a linear. So if we put it into a cross entropy, uh, I, we can add a soft max here um even though it's not necessary so let's try to add a soft max so for example we can add a soft max this equals nn soft max uh and we need to specify the dim so dim is minus one uh so this is a good habit of keeping this minus one dim for soft max it means we just do soft max in the last dimension the last dimension is 10 which means we do the softer max for the 10 output, okay, for each sample. So for example, and we can do output uh, probability is a soft max output, okay. So we do this again, and we'll find essentially, then let's print out output and uh, output probability. So for example, uh, let's try to see output. Let's check the first two outputs. Oh, it's already, it's already a, uh, oh, because of the initialization, I see. So as we can see, uh, the output, the first output, it has positive and negative numbers. So it's not a, it's, it's not a, a probability. Let me detach it, otherwise mess up the autograd. Um, but the output uh, probability, if we check the first two entries, uh, it will become a probability. So every term will be positive and pretty much every term is close to 0 0.1. It's because we have a random initialization. So um, the, uh, um, the output will be uh, random. And then we go into, um, for example, this MLP. So, like I said here, we can add um, we can add a soft max in the last layer. But if we choose later on, if we choose this uh, cross entropy function, it's actually not necessary to add uh, to add the soft max because it says the criteria combines log soft max and n n loss. So essentially, it you know, implement the soft max for us. So the cross entropy function. So we don't have to add, uh, let me add the remark here. So soft max uh, does not need to be implemented if uh, using an, an cross entropy loss, okay? So otherwise we have to, you know, add a softmax activation or say a softmax uh, in the last after the output. All right. So this is how we, this is how we uh, do an explicit forward. And this is extremely useful for debugging. And next is uh, we check this, for example, uh, we initialize a model and uh, we print the model. I think uh, not implemented error. Okay, so I haven't run this. Um, so if we run this new one, we change this method forward one back to forward. Um, this will be good. So we run this again. And uh, so as we can see, it's uh, going through. So next is after we set up the model, we choose an optimizer. So for example, uh, the PyTorch gives us an interface, um, which is this optimizer. 
And it actually, it has lots of optimizer available already. So for example, from torch optimum input uh, atom. So for example, it has all these, uh, uh, so we'll learn some of it. For example, atom W, weighted decay, and atom X, atom, atom, atom delta. All these are very common optimizers. Uh, for a neural network, for training a neural network. Okay, so let me just use a new. Uh, so for example, let's do DIR torch optimum. So other than these, uh, you know, built-in functions and some of the util functions, LR schedule swap. Um, so the uh, L, LR schedule actually is a sub module. We have um, these, oh, really? <laughs> Already Torch has LBFGS implemented. Uh, all right, that's not too bad. Um, for example, and we can even call some built-in schedulers, optim LR scheduler. So these are some schedulers we can use. Uh, remember in class we learned we should let our learning rate decay as one over the number of iterations. And this one actually does that for us. So for example, we have cosine annealing and lots of these uh, uh, scheduler. So later on, we will learn uh, how do we uh, do this, all right? And now let's look at, this is a core code of today, which is uh, the optimizer. So this is further simplified from our final project template. Okay. Um, so further simplified from the template. And first of all, uh, like we said earlier, it's a subclass of optimizer. Okay, so subclass of optimizer. And we give it a name of SGD. Actually, uh, Torch has an official implement of SGD, but it has lots of uh, you know options and uh, uh, it's kind of difficult. So normally, why we have this right? Why we have this thing right here? This is a, this is like a documentation. Um, and first of all, many of the time, if we write many codes, we need to write documentation to ourselves. So let me demonstrate some of the code I write for my research. Um, so for example. Um, I bet. So for example, this is, a, this is some code I wrote for myself. Uh, I need to add all these, you know, like uh, explanation to myself. Otherwise I don't know what I'm doing later. So this is a good habit of uh, writing explanation, writing documentation uh, for ourselves. And for example, for this, sometimes I wrote like very, um, so for example, I wrote some of uh, uh, explanation to myself and I put a reference here and this is an archive paper. So for example, I implemented from which and uh, uh, implemented based off on this and then I can track the reference back um, if something goes wrong in my own modified code. So this is a very good habit, writing a document to ourselves, And also if someone else is, is using our package, it's also important to let other people know how to use it. For example, here it's, it has an example, okay? And then here is the initialization. And the initialization is quite convoluted. So it has something like default, okay? And then we have a DICT, the dict. So in the next few uh, 10 minutes or so, we'll, we'll learn uh, what is a dictionary. And then this part, okay, so this part is constructor. Uh, and this is a very, this is a, if we wanna publish our code, uh, let's say not just do research for ourselves. If we want other people use our code, this is a, this is a nice 
you know, like a hack, so that it has a default. Okay. For example, if I run, um, let let's skip this part for now. Let let's focus on uh, this part. Again, this is a template, and we want to know how to use this template. So let's run this code. And for example, if we let our optimizer, for example, let me let me let this optimize. So let's initialize our optimizer here. And then this optimizer will have a default, okay? This attribute. Why it has a default is because it has a default right here. So that this default is an attribute of this class. So it's a, it's a nice trick, for example. If we do this, it's a dictionary and it says it's um, the learning rate by default is you know, 10 to the negative third power. And next is we want to learn dictionary. Okay, so how do we uh, initialize dictionary? And actually we can copy, we can copy this. Okay, so we copy this and we do our, uh, let's dictionary one equal this. So if we run this, it's already a dictionary. So for example, if we type, uh, the Python will tell us this is a dict. Okay, D-I-C-T means dictionary. What is a dictionary? Dictionary literally means dictionary. It has a key, for example. It has a key. For example, if we are looking in dictionary, the key is like the, the word, okay? And then it has a value. The value is like explanation. Um, for example, uh, we can do for, uh, sorry, for key in, Pick one keys and uh, we print key, okay? So the key is a string and it's LR. And what happens is we can add actually more keys to the dictionary. The dictionary, the syntax for implementing a dictionary is uh, is always this. So it's, uh, so let me do. So it's key value and then comma. So for example, this is key one value one and we do key two value two, okay? Ah, uh, okay. Now it's, okay. Huh? Why it doesn't accept my, uh, all right. Yeah, let me let me just put it here. Oh, sorry. I think I got to do this. My bad. Okay. So for example, how do we implement the dictionary is uh, is always this. We have key one, value one, key two, value two. For example, we can put a comma here. We want to add another attribute to the dictionary, another key. Let's say uh, we add, for example, this we name of our uh, of our this uh, uh, SGD. We can add, for example, the name of the optimizer is SGD. All right, let's run it. Um, and for example, if we run this guy, um, we have two keys, the LR and the name. How do we access the value? It's actually quite straightforward. Is we just put the key in uh, the dict and it will, it will become the value. So, so for example, if we do LR, you know, literally the value of this LR will return. And if we put, for example, if we put uh, the name of uh, the name of this, so the name, and then it will become SGD. So actually there, there is no restriction. I think, I don't think there is a restriction on the data type. I normally use string, but I don't, I think integer is okay as well. So for example, uh, I don't think integer is good. I don't think integer is allowed. Let, let's try it. So 10, uh, 20. Oh, integer is allowed, really? Okay, that, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I normally use string as my keys, but apparently integer can be a key as well. So, uh, so for example, 
I, I can do this and it will be 120. All right. But I doubt this is a good practice of using dictionary because for dictionary, our key, normally it means something. So uh, when we backtrack, we can, we can do this, all right? So for example, this just is uh, key comma value. And what is item? Item is nothing but uh, the combination of key and value. So for example, let's try that. Oops. So for example, full item in dict one items. Let's print item. And every item, I, I, I believe it's a tuple. So let's try it. Okay, it's a tuple. So for example, the first item is LR and uh, this is a key, this is a value. Let me make it bigger. Um, so for example, the LR is a key and uh, 10 to the negative third power is a value. And then the second is the name and uh, the value is SGD and the last one is 10 and 120. Okay. So the dict is a, is a, is a quite flexible, um, like a, I would say way of storing hyperparameter. So, so every package, nearly every package, okay. Uses dictionary to store hyperparameter. So by hyperparameter, we mean, for example, learning rate is a hyperparameter. And later on, we'll have more hyperparameters um, because the model, the model's weights is called parameter and, uh, uh, and learning rate is called a hyperparameter. So for example, if we Google, uh, for example, light GBM hyperparameter tuning, um, let's see if it has some examples. Um, okay, apparently them, yeah. But let, let's back here. Um, and another way of initializing a dictionary is, uh, is using this function. Okay, so use dict function. So dict function is actually a better way of uh, uh, initializing. So we can we can have dic dictionary two, and uh, we use this dict function. For example, what we can do is we can say literally using. For example, we can do. Uh, for example, my name uh, Su Hao equals uh, instructor. Keep this in mind. This is not a variable. So this is the key, okay? Right now, this is not defined. Okay, so for example, this is our 450 class. We can do a uh, name of the class is a math 450 and time of the class is, I don't know, three o'clock. Me, none of these variable uh, exist. What the role they play is they become the keys. So let's, uh, so if we check what's dictionary two, so they become the keys as we can see, and it's actually already sorted. So these become the string, okay. So the left hand side, becomes a string key, okay? And this is how we uh, initialize using dictionary. So now let's look back at what happens in this SGD code. So what this code does is for example, once we initialize, so once we initialize using this, so the param is model's parameter. So param is model parameters. 
And, uh, uh, and then if we initialize uh, the learning rate using 10 to the negative third power, so this format, this format is very common as well. So this format is called uh, the variable. So first of all, this is the name of our input. Okay. So this is, uh, um, so input function toggle, I'll say the input, and this is the type of the variable. And this is a value of the variable. So by default, the input should be a float and it's by default, the value should be 10 to the negative third power. And now let's look at this code. So if we give this uh, uh, class an input, this class has access to LR and then we initialize a dictionary to store all the parameters. For example, we can even store more on this, okay. So if we add a name, so for example, we can add uh, the name and we restrict it to be a string and we give it a name, we call it SGD and uh, we can put name equals name here, okay. I mean, even though it's quite confusing, are these the same variable? The answer is no. So the first one is the key. The second one is a value from here, okay? So to make this more um, readable, let me add this name input here. So for example, this is a name input. It's literally doing this. So the code tradition of this left equals right, we're using the same letter representation is uh, we want to introduce less bug because sometimes people are repeatedly using the same letter for the different variable and sometimes, but you can, you can argue it actually introduces more bug. Okay, Let, let's try this again. And then if we initialize it, and we'll find the default has one more, which is a name and the name is SGD, okay? All right, which is we pass this name input to this name. And so this super is just, uh, you know, uh, we learned the last time, it's the constructor that we initialize SGD using this default variable so I don't think I have time to introduce to how we can use dictionary as input, uh, but dictionary can be used as an input to, uh, to you know, simplify things a lot. And uh, I'm, I think that's it for today because uh, we don't have time to go through uh, the rest of the code. But after which this becomes a pipeline and we can train our model. So that's it for today. And uh, uh, we'll continue to do this uh, uh, a little bit on Monday and then we'll back to our theory class. So let me stop.